Melanie Stone was listed as the first beauty of their entire university, where she also served as president of the student union. But she was even more famous not for her appearance, but for her contemptuous attitude towards the male half of the planet's population, where for this reason the majority assumed that Melanie prefers girls in matters of personal close relationships. Because of this, and also due to the fairly close relationship between Melanie and Jessica, many were convinced that they were a love couple. But in reality, the situation was somewhat different, where in early childhood Melanie was attempted to be raped. The attacker did not have time to realize his plan, since the police, who were called when they saw the maniac dragging the girl into the bushes, neutralized him. Little Melanie remained safe and sound, but suffered mainly psychological trauma. But since then, she has really hated all men. As Melanie moved around the room, Jessica asked Michael a provocative question about who was cuter, her or Melanie, to which the young man, showing maximum tenderness, replied that Jessica is the most beautiful of all the girls in the world. He thought to himself that, in principle, he would like to stay away from Melanie, since she was definitely not right in the head. Because he now needs fans, and not those who could potentially deal with him. And suddenly Jessica called out to her friend, saying that she was late and calling her over, which did not really inspire Michael, who did not want to get close to this girl. Coming closer, Melanie apologized to her friend for being late, explaining that there were heavy traffic jams in the city. Jessica, tightly grasping Michael's hand, immediately introduced him to her friend as her boyfriend. After exchanging greetings, Melanie was the first to start the conversation, asking if he was playing now, to which the young man answered in the affirmative, feeling extremely awkward next to this girl. But instead of words of delight, the evil girl said that she had already heard a lot about how Michael jumps around the university from one girl to another, where he is certainly talented in the game, but leads an immoral lifestyle, which ran like a blade through the young man's body. Of course Michael was very indignant at what was said, but Jessica calmed him down, saying that Melanie had a sharp tongue, but a kind heart. And at that moment, the system made itself known, announcing that Melanie had been added as an object where the current location level was about 80 points. What finally drove the young man crazy, where he complained that the system, apparently, was broken, last time connecting some kind of pervert. And now this killer of the male spirit. Beside himself with rage, Michael kicked the floor, mentally lamenting the fact that he had just exchanged a few words with Melanie and immediately earned minus 80 points but that Jessica was looking on in surprise. Having calmed down a little, Michael, casting a sideways glance at Melanie, noted that he was turning into a womanizer after all, where even now he is attracted by the beauty of this girl who is angry towards men, which however the young man immediately attributed to the fault of the system, because of which he pays so much attention to the opposite sex. The holiday continued, and it was already getting dark outside, it was time for the birthday cake, which Michael delivered to the hall amidst shouts of congratulations. According to tradition, Jessica made a wish and blew out all the candles on the cake with a strong exhalation, after which she and Michael cut the cake into individual portions. And when the treat was distributed, and the birthday girl herself thanked her guests for their attention, Melanie asked to go away with her for a minute, which seemed very strange to Jessica since her friend's face was very concerned. Their conversation took place on the street under the bright light of a huge moon, where Melanie without foreplay advised her friend to stay away from Michael, which provoked a logical question from Jessica, why? To which the friend replied that it was obvious, where this guy at the university had already established relationships with many, and she did not want her friend to be left with a broken heart. And finishing the contents of the glass, Melanie added that she would graduate soon and plans to hand over the post of president of the students' union to Jessica. This news almost shocked the girl so much that she couldn't be found right away to be sure. After all, as for the functioning of the student union, in this regard over the past year they had many disagreements where no one wanted to give in to each other. And now this impulse to give her such a high position made Jessica think seriously. Where the first thought that came to her mind was that Melanie really was more into girls and, apparently, was attracted to her. Quickly began to wave his head and hands negatively, Jessica answered her friend that she was not sure that she could cope with such responsibility, and Michael was actually a very good and caring young man. To which Melanie, approaching the girl, sternly said that she did not recognize her, since before her deputy had been more demanding of herself and others, which in general would not change the decision on the transfer of powers. 
but Jessica, in a not very decisive tone, suddenly said that she was planning to leave the student union altogether in order to be able to spend more time with Michael, which embittered her friend even more, where she menacingly asked about where her friend's determination and perseverance had gone, adding that Michael was generally dangerous to society. At that same moment, the system announced to Michael that Melanie's level of favor towards him had dropped to minus 90 points, which made him almost choke on a piece of cake. He looked at the girls standing on the balcony, not understanding what he could do to deserve minus 10 points when he was just eating cake. And so the guests began to gradually go home, where the mistress of this house cordially thanked them for their visit and wished them a safe journey. Michael was also about to move towards his dorm, but he was suddenly stopped by Jessica's call, who having caught up with him, said that she still needed to talk to him. After talking with the girl, the young man finally left her house, thinking that as soon as the level of favor increased, the girl began to seem even more beautiful to him. During the conversation, she simply suggested going to the cinema together tomorrow, but it was suggested in such a tone as if she was asking him to spend the night with her. Michael was very flattered by this attitude towards him from a beautiful girl, but his pleasant thoughts, feelings, and fantasies were interrupted by the sounds of a man crying. Turning around, Michael saw Paul sitting next to his car, roaring and wailing that the years spent not learning to play the piano were wasted. Seeing his recent rival in such a defeated state, Michael could not help but experience moral satisfaction. In one quick movement, he found himself on the hood of Paul's car, where he jumped up in surprise, calling the young man by name, and Michael expressed his pleasure that his name was so well remembered. Then, looking closely at his defeated opponent, the young man noted that there was nothing wrong with the fact that he had lost their little musical battle. The tone with which Michael spoke and his facial expression did not please Paul, who also shouted that such communication with him was unacceptable. Jumping off the hood of the car, the young man said that of course Paul was right, and then headed to his car, noting that he was so full that it was difficult to walk. But the young man, inflamed by the confrontation, did not let up saying that he was ready to admit that Michael had surpassed him in playing the piano. But immediately taking out the key to his car, he continued that in terms of security, Michael is far from him, where probably he is not able to even pay for a taxi home. But the young man, who was no longer interested in further confrontation, simply walked up to his car, opened the door and began to get inside. Squeezing the key to his car so tightly that it shattered into several pieces, the young man stood and silently watched as his opponent got into a car that costs about five times more than his own. But then his feelings got the better of him and Paul fell to the ground, cursing Michael and trying to understand where he got such an expensive car. And Michael himself had long been immersed in thoughts about what movie he and Jessica would watch tomorrow. And then his attention was attracted by Melanie standing on the side of the road. The night turned out to be quite cool, and it was clear that the girl was literally shaking from the cold. However, Michael concluded that this was absolutely none of his business, and this abnormal girl could even die from the cold, but it would not affect his feelings. It was with these thoughts that he drove past, leaving Melanie completely alone in the middle of the street on that cold night, and believing that now several more points of location would disappear which he did not care about. But suddenly the young man looking in the rearview mirror pressed the brake pedal, where in the reflection he saw how several strong guys approached Melanie and began to pester her. Having surrounded the girl on all sides, the bandits took turns asking questions about why such a beauty was standing here alone at night and offered her their protection. Where one big guy, attracting Melanie to him, said that they would not take money from her for protection, but would prefer other ways to pay. However, neither the number of villains nor their intentions frightened the girl at all who shouted for the bandits to leave until she called the police. But what was said did not have any significant effect on the guys, where they only laughed loudly and unanimously in response to her words. And apparently the leader of these robbers began to approach the girl, saying that with such an obstinate character as hers, their pleasures would only become more fun. But before he could finish his thought, a sharp pain pierced his entire huge body. The reason for this was a precisely targeted kick by Melanie in the place that the robber planned to use for pleasure, which all his henchmen looked on with horror, and while the man was screaming in pain. Holding on to the injured area, and his team was trying to help with something, Melanie quickly escaped from the encirclement and ran away. Noticing that the agile prey was hiding from them, the wounded man shouted so that the others would not let her escape, 
and then several robbers rushed after the girl, shouting threats of violence if she did not stop immediately. Looking back to assess the distance at which the bandits had approached, the girl thought that they were like a pack of hyenas, and if there had been a little less of them, then with her hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, she would have given them a good beating. Since Melanie was looking back, she did not see how Michael suddenly appeared on her way into whom she crashed into with all her might. Looking at the out-of-breath girl, the young man asked if she was okay, to which Melanie did not answer anything only mentally asking herself the question of what this guy was doing here. During this time, the girl's pursuers managed to catch up with the young people and surrounded them, slowly squeezing the ring. The angry gang leader, still holding on to his injured place, said menacingly that the girl would have to work for all this until the morning. Melanie looked at this man with genuine disgust, thinking only that it was simply impossible to be so disgusting. Then she turned her attention to Michael, concluding that if it weren't for him, she would have run away long ago and been safe. Well, Michael, turning to the hooligans, said that in today's reality laws already rule and suggested that the attackers get out of his sight within the next two minutes. However, the leader of this gang said smugly that he was the law here and the defender would now be in very bad shape. In the next couple of minutes, the quiet, cloudless night was well diluted by the sounds of blows, falls, and screams of pain. And finally, in the middle of the street, only Michael remained on his feet from the male half, who examined the defeated opponents. Shaking his palms off one another, the young man, looking at the lying leader of the gang, said that he should have listened to his advice. After which he turned to Melanie again, asking if everything was okay with her. But suddenly the system announced that another minus five points had been taken away from this girl's disposition, which came as a real shock to Michael. Looking at this strange person, the young man could not find an explanation for what was wrong with her and what he had done wrong to her because he was only saving the girl. Melanie remained silent for now, fixing an extremely unfriendly gaze on her savior. However, Michael gave the girl an equally embittered look, where in his mind he said that he had just saved her, but her disposition not only did not increase, but also fell, which seemed to him the height of absurdity. And so, the rescued woman was the first to break the silence, where she pointed to the lying robbers and said that all this makes no sense. In an icy tone, she said that she would not fall for these outdated techniques, as others had fallen for. Where Melanie drew a logical chain from the moment where she stood at the bus stop and the bandits accosted her, to the moment when Michael suddenly appeared, supposedly to save her. After which she went to her savior, standing on the hand of one of the robbers along the way, and said that Michael's plan to seduce her had been a complete failure. And finally, finding herself face to face with a young man, Melanie said that he had overestimated himself and underestimated her. Suddenly the girl with a sharp movement grabbed the young man by the t-shirt, pulling the hero towards her. She shouted that Jessica was ready to leave the student union for his sake, and he suddenly decided to hit on her friend. After which, throwing the young man away from her with a rude gesture, Melanie, leaving, added that Michael was truly disgusting to her. For some time the young man stood in the middle of the road, trying to somehow digest what had happened. But unable to bear it, he literally grabbed his head, screaming into the void and thinking that this girl had a real persecution mania, calling out to the departing Melanie. The young man tried to explain that everything was completely different from what the girl had imagined for herself. But in response, she only heard that if he didn't come to his senses and start behaving normally towards Jessica, then she would find him and cut off one well-known place, which finally dissuaded Michael of the need to have any contact with this abnormal person. He allowed the girl to leave, remaining in the middle of the bandits lying on the ground with mixed feelings. But then one of the robbers began to come to his senses, raising his head and trying to figure out where he was and what had happened. But at that very moment, Michael was overcome by rage, where he, without even looking down, made a sharp kicking movement with his foot, where the bandit's head was unlucky enough to be in her trajectory, shouting that Melanie was just an ungrateful bitch. Without even noticing that he had just knocked out one of the bandits again, the young man turned around and walked away, hurling curses at the saved girl along the way. This is how the young man managed to walk all the way to the university. He could not stop thinking about what the ungrateful Melanie had said to him, continuing to address her with abusive words every now and then. He was distracted from his gloomy thoughts by the vibration of the phone in his pocket and the ringing melody that followed it. Taking the phone out of his pocket, Michael thought that someone was obviously late with the calls. 
As it turned out, Diana called, inquiring about the young man's plans for tomorrow. But before the young man had time to say a word in response, the girl, without wasting time, said that tomorrow she had a lot of free time and she was inviting Michael to go to the movies. Realizing that tomorrow he would also have a date with Jessica, the young man tried to object, but the persistent girl said that it was her first invitation, which he could not refuse. Michael had no choice but to accept the invitation, where he decided that it was simply worthwhile to distribute the dates so that they did not overlap in time. The next day Michael was sitting in his car near the university dormitory. Sending a message to his friend, he asked where he had been staying for so long. After all, yesterday Jack was tearfully talking about how another girl refused to go to the cinema with him, and therefore he asks a friend to accompany him. Clutching his head, Michael smiled, thinking that his plans were changing at the speed of light, where tomorrow, apparently, he would have to watch not two, but three films. After all, Jack was his best friend, who helped him out more than once in difficult times, including with money. Therefore, the plan was built in such a way that at 14 o'clock he goes to the cinema with Jack, at 17 o'clock with Jessica, and at 20 o'clock with Diana. Taking a heavy breath and then exhaling, the young man prepared for a mentally difficult day. And then the passenger door of the car opened, and someone sat in the seat next to the driver, where Michael expected to see his friend. However, instead of Jack, there was a girl sitting next to him doing her makeup. Noticing that the driver's attention was focused on her, the girl apologized, explaining that she was distracted and had the wrong car. To which the young man innocently said that it happens to everyone, told the girl to be more careful next time, and asked her to leave the salon, which would greet her in complete amazement. However, the persistent lady was not going to give up, saying that she may have gotten into the wrong car, but she hoped that she had met the right person. She thought to herself that she was not going to go out, because in this case she would not be able to pick up such a handsome guy in such an expensive car. And the next gesture towards rapprochement was an offer from the girl to add Michael as a friend on social networks, since in her opinion, everything that happened was fate. However, the imperturbable young man, looking at the screen of his phone, monotonously replied that he did not have a phone, which again brought the girl into complete amazement. Assuming that this was nothing more than someone's trap, Michael thought that he would definitely not fall into it, unlike many. The young man's last answer clearly touched the girl's nerve, and she irritably said that in that case she had to go. But as soon as she began to get out of the car, her gaze met the gaze of Jack, who approached and asked the girl what she was doing here, where both the girl herself and Michael were surprised by this strange coincidence of circumstances, and the young man who approached said in confusion that the girl refused to go to the cinema with him under the pretext of visiting her mother in the hospital. But she herself got out of his best friend's car. Michael immediately realized that this was the same girl because of whom he was going to the cinema with his friend today and hoped that Jack would understand everything correctly. The owner of the car, who also left the salon, began to tell his friend that he would explain everything to him now. But Jack interrupted him, angrily addressing the girl that, according to his assumption, she was not at all familiar with the owner of the car where he continued, accusing the girl of simply seeing an expensive car and deciding to start flirting with the one who was driving, not knowing that he would turn out to be Jack's friend. Laughing joyfully and nodding his head cheerfully, Michael confirmed his friend's words, saying that everything was exactly like that. Without talking any more with this girl, who was pursuing exclusively selfish intentions, the friends got into the car. Where left alone, all she could do was think about what wealthy friends the one she had refused had which didn't fit in her head, where Jack seemed to her like a big loser surviving on $1.800 a month. But the friends very soon arrived at one of the cinemas in their city. All the spectators had already taken their seats, and the screening of the new film was beginning. However, Jack was not at all interested in the film, where he asked his friend how he achieved so many beautiful girls hovering around him. To which Michael innocently replied that he could not constantly drive away those who were pursuing him and the girls sitting behind noticed that the guys came to the cinema as a couple, finding it strange and assuming that they were in a relationship. Michael continued to answer his question, saying that relationships are a battlefield on which one should never relax. Leaning towards Jack, the young man said that you don't need to try harder in a relationship, as you will be respected less and less. And in conclusion, the young man said that only men who are not very smart give money to women, while more practical men simply spend money on them. 
Thinking about what was said, Jack came to the conclusion that his friend's words had a certain meaning. Grabbing his friend's hand, the young man began to beg him to teach him how to treat girls correctly, to which Michael only tried to calm him down, saying that they were being looked at. But then she said that there was nothing to teach, he was just a little prettier than his friend and had a little more money. Where what was said greatly upset Jack, who responded by telling his friend to stop talking like that until they quarreled. At the end of the film, the friends walked towards the exit, where Jack thanked his friend for his attention and said that he was now in his debt. To which Michael replied that he had the opportunity to pay in the very near future, where Jack would greatly help him out if he called him in two or three hours. And those girls, having noticed how the men held hands for the second time, made the final conclusion for themselves that they were in a relationship. Having received his friend's consent to help, Michael headed to the next date, where he needed the call in order to find a reason to leave one date and come to another. Very soon the young man arrived at the cinema where they agreed to meet with Jessica. Seeing the girl waiting for him to appear, Michael was mentally glad that he was not late. Jessica, looking at her watch, noted that there was only half an hour left before the start of the film and her boyfriend was still not there. But a man's voice heard behind her attracted the girl's attention. However, when she turned around, Jessica saw a completely different man than she had been waiting for, where the man introduced himself as Clark and asked the girl to add him as a friend on a social network. To which the girl, asking for forgiveness, replied that she had a date, which, however, did not stop the persistent guy, who said that adding him as a friend would not interfere with the date. But then patting him on the shoulder, Michael came up and said that the girl had already refused him, and he shouldn't waste any more of her or his time. Winking at the guy and walking around him, the young man said that he would now demonstrate how to meet girls, after which he quickly approached Jessica, slamming his hand hard on the wall which sent the girl into a stupor, and he said that she was very beautiful, immediately offering to find a quieter place for a closer acquaintance. This manner of introduction did not at all impress the guy standing next to him, who noted that now for his opponent the matter would end in complete failure. But suddenly the girl laughed and replied that she agreed to Michael's proposal, where Michael's rival and all the people nearby who witnessed the events could not believe that this approach really worked. On a huge cinema screen, the main character of the film changed the trajectory of the rocket with a kick, but Jessica did not care about the twisted plot, where she sadly looked in the direction where her companion was sitting. And finally she asked if the young man was interested in watching the film at all. Since she saw that he was constantly busy with his phone, to which Michael quickly found his way and replied that he was just having some minor problems at home. And then the girl was struck by the thought that most likely, owning such a fortune, her gentleman and his family were most likely under constant pressure, which simple people like her could not understand. Remembering how he played, Jessica concluded that all other people only saw his talents, but did not fully realize the effort it took him to achieve such results. Where in an aristocratic family, through blood, sweat and tears, he had to study a huge number of disciplines in each of which he was obliged to become the best, where the young man never complained about this difficulty and simply silently carried this burden within himself. And then tears appeared on the girl's face, where she felt guilty for forcing him to watch a movie with her, when he perhaps just needed some other kind of rest. With a surge of emotion, Jessica placed her hand on top of Michael's, where this sudden gesture of hers caused considerable surprise in the young man. And when he turned around, he saw the tear-stained face of his companion, surprised by the tears, since she was not watching a melodrama, but an action movie. Being completely bewildered by what was happening, Michael did not know what to say or how to console the girl. When the film ended, Jessica and Michael were walking down the street, where the girl suggested they go and sit in some cafe, since she believed that the young man was hungry. And just as Michael began to answer something to his companion, Suddenly a cell phone ringing was heard from his trouser pocket. In an instant a picture flashed before the young man's eyes, where a couple of hours ago he asked to call his friend. Where taking out his phone, the young man was convinced that his friend had fulfilled his promise and fulfilled it at the most appropriate time. After answering the phone, Michael greeted his friend. But suddenly shouting into the phone that everything was so serious, the young man said that he was leaving immediately. Having disconnected, the caller himself did not understand at all what it was about now. Michael, after apologizing to the girl, said that he needed to leave because his friend got into some of trouble, to which Jessica responded with understanding. 
As Jessica watched the young man go, she thought that he was a very noble man, since he rushed to save his friend at his first call. Well, the noble man once inside the car marked himself as a genius, mentally telling himself that now he could go on a second date. The young man arrived at the house where Diana lived when it was already dark outside. Having sent the girl a message that he had arrived, he immediately read the response, where Diana told him that she was already coming down. And while Michael was waiting, his thoughts were focused on the fact that it is incredibly difficult to spin on several fronts at once, and such situations must be avoided in the future. But a pleasant female voice distracted the tired gentleman from his thoughts. Where turning, Michael saw the charming Diana in front of him, taking a flirtatious pose and apologizing for the fact that she was a little late. Seeing today's image of his new companion, Michael was speechless. Looking at the girl, the young man mentally noted that she was simply an incredible beauty. Where no matter what style of clothing she chooses for herself, everything will suit her. Behind his thoughts about the beauty of the girl, the young man lost touch with reality, which Diana quickly restored by asking if he was ready to go, to which her gentleman responded positively. And while they were heading to the car, Michael was thinking that if today's date went well, then he could well count on a closer relationship. Soon the couple was already in the cinema, where they both watched the film with fascination and interest. The logical continuation of this wonderful evening was a visit to one of the best cafes in the city, and the young people finished their date long after midnight, where Michael parked again in the same place where he picked up the girl a few hours ago. Thanking the young man for the wonderful date, Diana wished him a safe journey home and headed towards her house. But before the girl had time to take even a couple of steps, Michael suddenly called out to her. Very embarrassed, the young man, using an old, hackneyed but still effective trick, asked the girl for permission to go up to her for water. Where, on the one hand, this state of affairs greatly pleased Diana, but on the other hand, the girl did not know whether it was worth inviting the young man to her place now. But after some 10-15 minutes, Michael was already taking a shower in the apartment of his second companion today. Where the owner of the apartment herself was sitting on the sofa hugging a pillow, unable to understand what was wrong with her today, where she had never behaved like this before. After all, Michael only asked to go up for a drink, and in the end she leaves him at her place for the night because it's already quite late to return. These thoughts made the girl feel very ashamed of herself, where for some reason she gave permission for the young man to stay. And then her thoughts went further, where she thought about what if intimacy suddenly happened between them, where she caught herself thinking that she wouldn't even mind at all. But at that very second Diana covered her face with a pillow, mentally scolding herself for these vulgar thoughts. And when she removed the pillow from her face, her gaze fell on the movie tickets sticking out of Michael's pocket. Having taken them out, Diana discovered that there were not two but four tickets immediately concluding for herself that the young man had also managed to go to the cinema with another girl. A few minutes later, Michael emerged from the shower, drying his hair and telling the shower owner that he was done, and almost immediately his gaze fell on four movie tickets lying on the table. Well, Diana, sitting on the sofa, said menacingly that these four tickets fell out of the young man's pocket, where she thinks that he also went to the cinema with another girl. Without allowing Michael to say a word in response, the girl immediately added that he had become a part of her life. But if he didn't like her and wanted to meet others behind her back, he could immediately say so and get out of here. Michael tried to say something in response to this claim, which although it was a guess, was a correct guess. But the girl suddenly stood up and, pointing to the door, demanded that the young man leave her apartment, where, following the girl's words, the system announced that the level of favor had dropped by minus ten points. But not even a couple of seconds had passed before the system was activated again, announcing a decrease in the location level by another minus 10 points. Michael understood that something urgently needed to be done, otherwise the object could be lost forever. Where, without thinking twice, he told himself that he had been preparing for a similar situation, and now it was time to act. Looking at the girl with a very sad look, the young man quietly said that he was very disappointed that just two extra tickets could undermine his credibility so much. To which the very angry girl replied that she was not going to discuss this at all. Then, taking out his mobile phone and dialing Jack's number, Michael handed it to Diana, saying that she could ask this guy if he had been to the cinema with him today. There was no categorical reaction from the girl, which meant that she was ready to accept the information. 
and on the other end of the line, Sleepy Jack was asking his friend why he was calling so late and would be his. But instead of a friend's voice, he heard a female voice introducing herself as Diana, who asked if he went to the movies with Michael today. To which the still not fully awakened young man replied that he really went to the cinema with his friend, because Ingai, whom he had invited earlier, refused him. And only after finishing the story did Jack realize who was talking to him on Michael's phone at night. Looking at his mobile phone, the young man literally shouted questions into the phone one after another where he was interested in where the girl got his friend's mobile phone and whether they were together at such a late time of day. After which words of surprise were heard from the phone speaker that they were together at such a time. Apologizing for the disturbance, Diana passed out, looking at the young man as he dressed and wondering if she could have made a mistake or if Jack was simply covering for his friend. But then she remembered that she knew the same Inga that Michael's friend had mentioned, quickly finding and dialing her number. And when Inga answered, Diana asked essentially the same question regarding Michael and Jack's trip to the cinema, to which the girl replied that Jack really invited her to the movies, but she refused him where he then left with the guy in a red sports car. And if only she knew that Jack had such rich friends, she would never have refused to him. Realizing that circumstances were now on his side, Michael asked if the girl had verified his integrity, or should she still be shown the card payment history. But without allowing Diana to say a word, the young man said that he was very disappointed in her and headed towards the exit. Diana tried to shout after him that she was wrong and would never do that again, but Michael had already left the apartment, finally slamming the door effectively. And only when he was out of sight of his second companion of the evening, he exhaled with relief and noted that he had just walked along the very edge. One of Michael's hardest days was over, and a new day arrived, where the sun had already risen high above the university. Having written a message to Michael with an apology, the girl received a response in which the young man took all the blame on himself, saying that he just needed to tell everything right away and that it touched the girl in love. And when the system announced that all of Diana's favor points had been returned, the young man was finally able to breathe a sigh of relief. Noting that there was even one point more than before, Michael wiping his forehead from sweat, assured that he would not push himself into such stories anymore where for him it was a good lesson about the need to make an effort to separate everyone the system works with. He needed to clearly differentiate which of the girls would simply be at the level of useful connections and with whom he could think about a more intimate relationship. Having such opportunities, Michael shouted that he is one of the few who does not need to choose one from several girls, since with the system he can provide the needs of almost everyone. Moving along the corridor of the university, he suddenly overheard a conversation among freshmen who said that a certain Paul Mitchell, a top basketball player, had organized and sponsored a basketball tournament, which they decided to go watch. Hearing the familiar first and last name, Michael was surprised that this crybaby was called the strongest basketball player. And without thinking twice, the young man decided to attend this event, immediately heading towards the gym. The game was already in full swing and the hall was simply filled with both fans and fans of Paul who shouted at the top of their lungs that they loved their idol and wanted children from him. But Michael saw some kind of pretense in everything that was happening. And while the young man was thinking about his own thoughts, he was noticed by two very attractive girls standing nearby, where Veronica only managed to note that Michael was present in the hall while Angelica had already taken off, heading towards the object of her sympathy. The young man and the girl had already warmly greeted each other and Veronica could only be angry at her sluggishness. But before any conversation could begin, Michael's attention suddenly attracted by a touch on his shoulder. Turning around, the young man saw another object of his system, the athlete Christy, who concluded out loud that Michael also liked basketball. Watching as Michael was surrounded on all sides by the most famous beauties of the university, the freshmen standing nearby quietly shared gossip about what was happening and discussed the girl's external characteristics. At that moment, Jessica appeared in the hall accompanied by Melanie, where the latter, upon entering, managed to make a complaint to the guys, pointing out the inadmissibility of discussing the beauty of girls. Having walked a little further, Melanie noted that there was a terrible smell of sweat to which her companion said that this was, after all, a sports competition. And so, having accepted the next serve, Paul suddenly saw that Michael was in the hall, where he was furious that he was constantly surrounded by the most beautiful girls, who for some reason did not pay any attention to such a handsome man as Paul himself.
Noticing that Jessica had also appeared in the hall, Paul decided that this was his chance to take revenge for his defeat at the girls' birthday celebration, where the young man thought to himself that he had been playing basketball for more than two years and Michael would never beat him. Behind these thoughts, Paul threw the ball as hard as he could in the direction where Michael was standing. However, the reaction of the young man, pumped by the system, was more than excellent, where he immediately noticed movement on the left. With a light and calm movement of his hand, Michael stopped the movement of the ball. Looking menacingly at Paul, the young man asked how he should regard this gesture, perhaps as revenge for losing in a musical battle. To which Paul smugly replied that Michael thought too highly of himself, thinking about some kind of revenge, he also offered to fight one-on-one -on -one in basketball. Throwing the ball back, the young man said that he was ready to join the game without any problems. And Paul, preparing to catch the ball, noted that judging by the throw, his opponent had never played basketball in his life. But as soon as the ball touched the young man's hands, he was literally carried away exactly along the trajectory of the ball. Such was the force of this throw. Watching what was happening, Jessica enthusiastically noted that Paul himself, the captain of the team, was unable to accept a serve from Michael and Melanie in her own manner, noted that men can only rely on brute physical strength. Meanwhile, Paul was trying to get to his feet as players from his team asked if everything was okay with him. Throwing an angry glance at Michael, the young man wondered how this seemingly nondescript guy could have such incredible power. Well, Michael himself had already approached his opponent, who was on all fours, saying that he was ready to play five on five, where he would be able to assess the level of all the team players. Such a bold statement did not leave anyone in the hall indifferent. But most of all, Paul was surprised, who noted that all the players are his people, as are the judges, which Michael knows very well, but he still decided to play. However, this state of affairs on the whole suited the first university basketball player, since in fact his opponent would not be playing five on five, but one against nine. And so the teams were formed, the players took their places, and the game began. Taking the serve, Paul rushed towards the ring like a hurricane giving instructions to everyone so that they clear the way for him. His only thoughts were that now he would smear Michael, that he would rehabilitate him in front of Jessica, who would see what a non-entity he was. And his opponent stood nearby, surrounded by players from Paul's team, who tried to deprive him of the opportunity to maneuver. Looking at everything that was happening with a cold gaze, Michael mentally chuckled at this whole staged game, and now he has already turned to the system asking to use a certain number of reinforcement points to develop his skill in playing basketball, equal to 30 years of experience. Meanwhile, Paul had already reached the backboard with the opposing team's hoop, where he was only thinking about what a beautiful ball he would now drop into this basket. With a cry of victory, the young man soared into the air, swinging the hand holding the ball sideways and upward to effectively place the ball into the hoop. But a few centimeters from the goal, the movement of his hand with the ball was stopped by someone's hand. The ball flew to the side and Paul could not believe that Michael had just stopped him from scoring the ball. The spectators were no less surprised where the fact that Michael was able to block the attack of the team captain caused a stir. Well, those three who tried to block the enemy stood with a confused look, trying to find out from each other how Michael was able to escape, where he seemed to disappear from their environment and appear in another place. Paul, who had already managed to land after an unsuccessful throw, stood and looked at Michael with a confused look, trying to understand at least something of what just happened. Well, the new rising star of school basketball, spinning the ball on one finger, was just beginning to say that now it was his turn to score, when suddenly the referee's whistle sounded, where a violation of the rules was announced. After which Michael realized that not only everyone on the court was playing against him, but also the judges which did not bring much joy. A free kick was immediately awarded, which was successfully converted by Paul, and the first point appeared on his team's account. The thrower himself stood and gloated, thinking that even the skills of a good game would not help his opponent because all the judges, as they say, were bought. However, everything that happened caused a whole wave of indignation among the spectators, where exclamations rained down from all sides that the game was not fair. Michael's team was being condemned and that this should not happen, especially within the walls of the university. As for Michael, he was very angry about the whole situation, where he mentally concluded that the players and judges may not respect him, but he will force them to respect the spirit of the sport. The young man's attitude was more than decisive, 
where with his actions he decided to remind everyone present what real sport is. Having prepared himself, Michael decided that he would rely solely on himself, and not on the players collaborating with his opponent. With his first move, he took the ball away from his main opponent, surprising the latter with the speed with which he moved, and after a few seconds the young man was already flying towards the ring with his hand raised up, squeezing the ball. The goal was scored and Michael himself, in the best spirit of basketball, hung on the ring where he had just dropped the ball. Not even a minute had passed before another ball was delivered by the young man directly into the hoop, and Paul, losing patience, nervously instructed his team that they should simply surround the opponent, not giving him freedom of maneuver, and these instructions applied not only to the players playing for Paul, but also to those who were formerly on Michael's team. The leader's orders were carried out and Michael found himself in a very dense ring of players, which didn't bother him at all, where the young man, smiling intriguingly, suddenly jumped with all his might and soared into the air above the heads of his rivals after which he made a powerful throw where the ball of course hit the hoop, and finally he was able to attract the real attention of the players on the field and the referee, where everyone thought about the reason why this young man was playing the game so fiercely. Where the players were most confused was that they understood that was just a staged match, and it was not at all clear why Michael was trying so hard in the game, following the rules and striving to win. The referee was the first to remember the events of his basketball past, where his mentor always taught him that refereeing is the basis of the game, where after the final siren the referee's conscience must be clear. Where having replayed these memories in his head, the judge immediately remembered the sportsmanship and respect for sports. The next who plunged into memories were the players of the teams, where everyone heard the words of the coach in their heads that victory or defeat is determined not by the score on the scoreboard, but by how much you gave your best in the game. And now, remembering this, they looked in confusion at Michael who, unlike them, played honestly and made every effort. At that very moment all these men mentally dubbed themselves such lowly fallen people that they should not play basketball or referee the game at all. Michael, having again taken possession of the ball and picking up speed to rush towards the opposing team's hoop, suddenly saw that all the players froze in place, not understanding what was happening. Spectators and fans were also shocked that at one point the game simply stopped, no one else interfered with Michael, did not try to take the ball, did not block his movements. Where the young man simply walked along the court, hitting the ball off the floor under the enthusiastic looks of the players of both teams. And then one of the spectators made the right conclusion, saying that this young man's attitude towards the game crushed the rest of the players. Jessica did not remain indifferent to what happened saying that now everyone has witnessed true sportsmanship, and only Paul was beside himself with rage, not understanding what had happened at all, and wondering if none of those he bribed needed money anymore.